Intel's 13th generation is here. And one thing we must ask ourselves is how much longer can Intel keep up with this? So welcome to the channel. This is our first video here. Obviously, we have another channel. That's how we could get all the all this tech and all this equipment. And we would really love to hear from you guys at the end of the video what you thought about the review and about my accent because it's probably pretty funny. And we'll obviously read all the comments. So make sure you write it down in the comment section. All five of them. <laughs> all five of you. This is the starting line for Intel's 13th CPU generation, also known as Raptor Lake. And we begin with the i9-13900K. Today is the official launch of Raptor Lake, the refresh and improvement on Intel's pretty successful 12th generation, which introduced a different approach to CPU performance with main performance cores and secondary efficiency cores. The new gen is still manufactured in Intel 7 process, which is roughly similar to TSMC's 10 nanometer process. And in general, we can see an increase in every little thing compared to the previous gen. The 13900K has more e-cores, 16 cores to be exact, which is twice the count from its predecessor. And it brings it to a total of 24 cores and 32 processes. We also get more cache and higher clock speeds that could put the 12900K S and AMD Zen 4 to shame with up to 5.8 GHz turbo boost. All that with Intel's claims to have a small TDP increase of 12 watts for a total of 253 watts. And that was actually one of the most worrying data points for the 13990K since at the launch of its predecessor we saw it reaching up to a temperature of 100 degrees Celsius. So you could guess how surprised we were to find the engineers at Intel managed to keep this chip at bay. Regardless of the 13900K being more in every single way and for the same Prime95 test for 30 minutes it reached 86 degrees Celsius compared to the 100C of the previous gen. This is very impressive. It's important to say that we're trying to keep this battlefield as balanced as we can. And we're using the same cooling, the ASUS Ryogen 2 360mm AIO cooling, the same 5200MHz DDR5 RAM from XPG, and same MSI RTX 3080 Ti Gaming X GPU. Before we proceed to the benchmarks, we should really talk just a bit on the new platform Intel is introducing here. We're using the ASUS Z790 ROG Maximus Hero, and if you're familiar with the previous model, it's pretty much the same, 20 plus 1 power phases rated at 90 amps, and very similar rear I.O. The biggest update for the new platform is more PCIe lanes from the chipset, and this actually gives us more higher speed USB ports at the back. That's pretty much it. It would be extremely difficult to know which is which if you put the Z690 and the Z790 Hero side by side. And another thing that's really nice to mention here is that Intel is still forwards and backwards compatible, but most important is the support for DDR4 memory in some boards for anyone who's a bit tight on budget. And now for the fun part. In 3 d Mark, the CPU scores are significantly higher, 23 to 33%. In the CPU profiler test, we see a milder improvement for single core performance around 12%, but in multi-core, the 8 extra E cores with higher clock speeds get us almost 40% increase in performance. In Cinebench, the gap is similar with multi-core performance around 33% higher in all the tests, while single core performance is very sane with only 3.5% increase. And now to real world tests focused in content creation and more professional use cases. Blender shows a very large improvement as we saw before. The extra E cores really give additional compute power and while Blender users will mostly use GPU acceleration, it's an amazing reference for the uplift. Adobe on the other hand still much prefers single core performance. Premiere gets us around a 5% uplift, Photoshop is just about 16.5% and After Effects gets us almost 17% uplift in performance. In gaming, it's safe to say the performance gap is less mind-blowing. Most of the uplifts are due to the higher clock speeds of the Intel 13th generation. And while there's a nice uplift in almost every title that we tested, it's still just a few percents, which will definitely help Intel to show who has the biggest tool in the benchmarks. But in real life, most gamers won't even notice the difference. In general, 1080p gets us around 5% more FPS on average and 1440p just under 
Sadly, we still couldn't get our hands on AMD's latest generation of CPUs, but based on the few tests of other media outlets, we could actually see the 7950X was beaten by the 13900K in almost every way, while Intel is doing it cheaper and even runs cooler while doing it. To sum it up, we can see a process of improvement and sharpening of the product stack while adding more cores all across the board. The 3900K is an excellent CPU that shines particularly well for people that do productive work and content creation on their computers. And for all the gamers in the audience, it's pretty much obvious the 3900K would be one of the best CPUs for gaming, but we expect roughly the same performance in gaming applications from the new i7 and the new i5, who proved in the past that they are more than worthy to look into for high-end gaming builds. And guys, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the reviews on those. Personally, I'm very excited for the 13700K that on paper is totally an updated 12th gen i9. And the 13600K that is now running a whopping 14 core and 20 threads on an i5 class CPU, which is totally amazing. And that's it guys, I hope you liked the video. And don't forget guys, this is our first video in English, we have another channel in another language and we really want your feedback on this, so make sure you write down in the comment section and let us know what you think on this review. And I know I probably have a pretty funny accent, but this is life and this is what we do and we hope you like it. Enjoy 13th generation, see you next time. Thank you also.